Hey everyone, Fusemite coming at ya. Last week we took a look at getting started with Unity Render Streaming and we primarily focused on the Unity client and how you can get that quickly set up with the web server. So in this video, I wanted to quickly spend a little bit more time on that web server and more specifically integrating that with the Coturn web server so that you can have a seamless solution that leverages an ICE server so that you can establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection or establish a relay as well as integrating that with the web server in and of itself so that it's all kind of in one package. You could take that to any cloud and get that pretty deployed seamlessly. And if you're interested in this types of content, then definitely let me know down in the comments below. It's not something I typically do, but I think it's pretty important in, at least in the context of render streaming. So let's quickly start here as a quick recap with Unity to get the web server, you would head over to edit and then under render streaming, there's this download web app. This will download the executable for that web server. This is also the same exact code if we head over into a browser here, is available on the GitHub for Unity render streaming and it's specifically this web app that is here. This is what allows you to go ahead and set up HTML pages for navigating between the different projects that are here and more specifically taking a look at the video player sample that they provide. And otherwise, this is a very simple HTTP web server. And that is kind of documented a little bit more in detail over on their readmes, which you can go ahead and take a look at. But for our purposes, what we'll be leveraging here is just this web app, which is a node based application, converting that into a Docker image. And then we can integrate that with the Coturn Docker image that is already made available to us over on Docker Hub. And if you're just getting started and you don't want to kind of go through the whole setup process that we're going to be kind of more explaining in detail throughout the rest of the video, we also have this Docker Hub image for the render server. And so you can leverage this here is just simply pull this specific image down and you should be good to go at least as far as the render server goes. Speaking of the render server, let's head over into Sublime here. The way that I've at least set this up here is first we need to take this node application and convert it into a Docker image. If you're interested in what a Docker image is or what Docker is specifically, why you should care about it, there's already a video on the channel that I'd encourage you to take a look at. But at a very high level, a Docker image is simply instructions on how to create your application as a virtual machine that is running on a very lightweight operating system. So in our case, we'll be taking a look at a node specific virtual image and then adding our application on top of that. Walking through these instructions step by step here, you first have the start of every pretty much Docker file is what the base image that you want to leverage. In our case, we want to use, because we're using Node.js, we want to be using a Node.js image. And this is specifically here, this tab, this is the official Node.js image that is provided by Node that uses Ubuntu as the base and then they've installed in all of the specific packages dependent on which version of Node you're looking at. In our case, we're looking at the LTS for this 3.13 uh, image. And I mean, in our case, it really doesn't matter because it's such a basic Node application. You could use whatever you want. Next, we have a few instructions for copying our application into this new image that we're creating. So we'd set up a working directory. I'm just gonna be lazy and call it application. And then we copy in all of the files from our current working directory. From the working directory, I'm, I'm basically located here, which is happens to be where my Docker file is. And what we're saying with the copy command is to copy in all of these files recursively into this application folder that we've created as we're building out our own custom render streaming image. We then go ahead, run npm install to install all the packages, then the specific application that we're using here for render streaming has a build step. So we, we run build and then we set where we want our application to start when we run our, our image as a container. 
and that here is this run start command. So whenever we spin up our Docker container as an actual working instance, that was the command that'll be run. And we can pass in arguments as what I've done in the rest of the files, just for say the web sockets, or if you wanna change the port, for example. For simplicity's sake, you don't even have to do anything. It's simple as just keep it to 80 and to leverage web sockets. So this defines our actual working image. And then to get this into image form, we simply can head over to a terminal here. If you have Docker installed, you can actually, I think I have the command here already. It's yeah, docker build t image, and then wherever your Docker file is located. So in this case, I'm already within the web client, so I can simply go ahead and just put dot to reference the current working directory for Docker file. And that will spit up the Docker image that I've already gone ahead and uploaded here to our Fuseman Docker Hub repository. So then you can go ahead and pull it, push this and run this wherever you would like. And it's as really as simple as that, whether you wanna run this in Google Cloud, whether you wanna run this with edge computing, whether you wanna run this in your own fancy dancy on-premise cloud hosted solution, Docker allows you to do that. And that's what's extremely powerful about that. So great, we've gone ahead, set up render streaming. If that we just want that, we're good to go. But let's say we want to leverage the fact that we need an ICE server to establish a either stun connection where we're establishing the peer-to-peer -peer, or alternatively a a turn connection where we're allowing for network traversal through our web server. In that case, we wanna leverage the co-turn server. To do this and deploy multiple containers, that's where Docker Compose comes in. So heading back over here to our Docker Compose file, what this allows us to do is to define both containers as services and get them deployed simultaneously. So. Right here, we have our render web server, which is responsible for doing that signaling that we need for WebRTC. And that is that public image that I've gone ahead, uploaded to Docker Hub, so we can keep that very simple here. And the arguments that we wanna add in case we need to do so and override them, we can apply as part of our environment. For the Coturn server, we can apply that as a separate service. And similarly here, we have a bunch of different commands that we'll need to include in order to customize our Coturn server. Where did I get all of this? If we head back over to our Coturn Docker Hub instructions and scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you can see that they've provided configuration commands that are available for setting up Coturn in a variety of different ways. In particular, they have this run command here that is available so that you can see a list of the commonly used parameters. In our case, we're taking a few of those as well as our automatic detection, which is incredibly useful for actually making sure that the Coturn can connect to the internet and it knows what it's talking about and can also connect other devices to itself. And we just kind of put those together as arguments that are specified under the command keyword. One thing to note here is Docker Compose, the dollar sign is a special character. So you'll need to do the double to break out of that special character. But otherwise, it's just specify all of the commands that you need, specify the image that you wanna use. Here, we'll specify the network mode as host so that we know what the ports we wanna use. And that is all we need to define these two specific services, our render web server and the Coturn server. Then all we need to do is CD into the directory that has our compose file and then do docker compose up. What this will do is similar to a docker run, which starts up a singular container. This will go ahead and start up both of those containers. It might need to download them if you're just doing this fresh, Otherwise, as you can see here, it goes ahead and starts up those instances. Now, if you're doing this locally, that's probably not the best test specifically for the Coturn server, as the Coturn server does want an external IP address and most of us happen to be behind a router and don't have an actual external IP address that we are actually using. So what I would recommend to do is actually set this up on say Google Cloud, or to go ahead and set this up on some other service like MobileEdgeX, which I've gone ahead and done. 
And once you do that, if we head back into the browser, if and you just want to test this Coturn server, head over to this website that's Trickle Ice. It tests and makes sure that you actually have a correct ICE server implementation up and running. And you can test both the stun or the turn implementation. In this case, I just wanna go ahead and test that stun implementation. And I've gone ahead and deployed this compose file on mobile edgex. So all I have to go ahead and do is click this gather suffix or gather candidates. And then if we see this RTP suffix command, that's when you know that you've set up your stun server correctly. Uh, that's also gone ahead and been documented right here. As you can actually see, this is what it means to, to set that up correctly. But now that we've confirmed that this is working, we can actually go ahead, copy this link, head back into Unity here. Instead of the Google stun server, just drop in the stun server that you've deployed yourself. So I've already gone ahead and done that. Plug this in here. Uh, you'll want to also head over to your web client code. And if you are using the, the public web client, let's say the, the video player, for example, you can head over to the JavaScript folder that's at the top level. There's a config file here. And on this config file, you can actually see I was already playing around with it. You'll have a settings for ICE servers. Go ahead, just replace this here as well. And that will allow your web server and your Unity client to connect to the same ICE servers and then start communicating with one another. And that's everything you need to get started with the render streaming solution and hosting that in a dockerized fashion, as well as setting up an ICE co-turn server as part of your bundled solution. I think this is incredibly powerful as you start to dive not only into render streaming, but WebRTC as a broader concept and a broader networking paradigm. But I'd love to know down in the comments below if there are kind of questions you have because we, we did go over a lot in this video and uh, what you'd like to see kind of built on top of this because I think, again, there's, there's so much that you can do not only with render streaming, but WebRTC in general. So that'll do it for here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's been Fuse, man, and I'm sorry.